didn't get the Neesmith minutes we thought we'd get because they all the games were postponed. I actually thought that would have been an interesting experiment. We got more than I would have expected, though. But he played a bunch tonight. He played eight in the first half, and then he played the whole garbage session there. First half didn't look great again. A um, couple of fouls, missed a couple shots. I actually liked a couple things I saw late. Certainly, like, that catch and shoot, like – when he made the three isn't that literally all you want him to do like if he could just do that three four times a game come off a screen catch shoot it's such a pretty release it's such a nice shot I, it's you just have to find him enough wherewithal and confidence to get on the floor to not be totally lost and just fire off a few of those I like, yeah. like, I liked it. I actually liked his aggression too. Even though he traveled on one, he went to the hoop another time on a drive and dish on the semi and one. And he was like pumped. I actually liked his attitude. He was like super into it. After he dished at the semi, he gave a big fist pump on the sideline to make a good play. It looked like those eight minutes mattered to him at the end of the game. Like he really, he was really putting in an effort. I, that's the so far this year. That's the most positive thing we've seen from him. I, I think. Yeah, what I, what, oh no, go ahead, Bob. Well, what I was saying is, you know, he starts this year four fourteen from the field, and we're not seeing the three point production that we would like from him one of four tonight. Uh, we thought he was the best shooter in the draft, and you would think he would just come out here guns blazing, nailing them left and right. And what you do see, John, and we talked about the benefits of possibly giving him some run early in the year, giving him a chance to make mistakes, put it in the flow of the game. Is when he gets in in that quarter, first quarter, second quarter stretch there. He's rushing. The release is off. I think Max on the radio broadcast said that it looks kind of bumpy, his shot release. And you see a guy who looks so good in college on that shooting aspect of his game just completely break down with mechanics, rushing shots. I thought that first shot he fired off from the corner was extremely rushed with space. And he's not getting the production he wants because – the game's just coming at him so it's fast right fast now. For him. Yep, the <laughs> moments that he's in there go by too quickly. He's yep. trying to do too much. Everything's moving too fast. <laughs> so a night like tonight's yeah. huge in that regard to get the extended run, to make some mistakes. He made a few bad defensive mistakes early, and Brad still let him roll. That was I, I thought that was commendable by Brad. And you'll have to, again, I mean, actually, if everyone gets COVID, maybe they won't have to. You know, it looks like the Celtics are getting their, their stuff out of the way, but – uh, though technically it's only Tatum and uh, Tatum and Rob right now, but um, yeah, it, that was exactly it. I thought it, you know he, you got to let him play through some mistakes, and this was a good good opportunity too. Hopefully there'll be others because he needs extended run. You want to see some extended run with starters as well, um, and just to see him just slow it down a bit. You know he's got to he's yeah. got to play the game at NBA speed for a while for it to start to settle down where he can be the guy he's supposed to be yeah i think that's the next step to see him with that starting unit i think that'll that'll help him but it's, it's a tough spot for him to be in because i feel like everyone is sort of on a different level for obvious reasons right i mean guys have been on the floor more than him so i feel like when he's in there it's sort of a tough spot especially tonight you know these guys have a week off they were fresh i mean you can tell they just had a you know uh, an extra pep in their step and, and i think he was just sort of trying to pick his spots there but he was really patient you know i thought that at some parts he did he did he does rush his offense, but you know for, for him to, to get that shot to go through, I, I think uh, it's important mm -hmm. to him because he has to, he's just start getting more comfortable out there with these guys, and I think it's going to, that's going to happen naturally. But it's also it's a good thing for the Celtics as a team, but it's, you know the way Pritchard's been playing because think about it, I mean he's Pritchard's getting close to a point where he's going to start running a tight ship, right? So it's like man, when you get the ball, it's like don't don't mess up because you're not going to get it again. Like, I really think it's getting to that point, guys, where Pritchard just, like, he comes in there, he controls the offense, and he's calling the shots. Like, you know, even with Jalen out there. I mean, of course, there's no Tatum, but that's interesting to see moving forward because, obviously, Jalen trusts him. You know, he's, he's it's paid off. Where you know, That three-pointer in the corner where Jalen found him, he knew exactly where he was because he's there often. You know, he's been really, uh, obviously, big for this for this team offensively. But I think he's starting to take another step here where he's, he's really controlling that offense in a way where guys like Neesmith are going to have a tougher time to get their touches unless they're more aggressive or unless they show that, you know, they're moving in the right direction, progression. -wise. I think you're right with the wings. The wings have played so well, semi green, like those guys are earning legitimate minutes. We came into this year saying, Oh, how can Neesmith not be playing with the guys that are in front of him? Well, it turns out those guys are actually pretty good.